following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. Tom Troop began working Dyer the Madman in the Saturday morning workshop scene study class at Paul Kent's Melrose Theater in late spring 1966. He had become interested after reading Nikolai Gogol's short story. Tom had become interested in taking on the challenge of a one-man show for some time. After working on the first scene of Diary for a couple of weeks, Tom asked if I would direct the project. I was thrilled to be asked because Tom and I were good friends and I greatly admired his talent. I had never directed anything when Tom had asked me to direct Diary. I had been a professional actor for 10 years and had never considered directing. And maybe mean the difference between our making it safely back from Mars or not. Tom's request. How would you rate it? Oh, very good. Changed the course of my artistic life. Directing became and still is my greatest artistic passion. I want to build up my reputation. Thanks to Tom. Then you'd be willing to work with me again. Ah, uh, anytime. We met playing the roles of street gang members in an episode of Lockup, which starred McDonald Carey and John Doucette for Ziv Television Productions here in Hollywood. You're on the wrong turf, mister. Go back where you belong. You hear him? The wrong turf. Don't come back. This was soon after Tom's arrival in Los Angeles Gotta from New York. Credit, As a side note, Two other gang members on the show on were it. Leonard Nimoy and James Druid. Tom introduced me to Sherman Marks and his workshop, and there were about 16 actors participating at that time. It was quite an illustrious group. Uh, among the actors that were Doing scenes on a regular basis every Saturday morning was uh, Shirley Knight, Robert Easton, Gene Reynolds, Ray Strickland, Richard Bull, and an actor named Paul Kent. Lucille Ball meets a new partner from Los Angeles, but Paul Kent. And at the moment, Paul is uh, starting a brand new little theater, and whatever money they win tonight will go for their little theater That's to help aspiring actors and actors. Yeah. Yeah, and my husband's in it, so he'll be happy he's going to have light on him now. <laughs> Paul Kent had the idea of starting a theater of his own called the Melrose. So Tom and myself and Richard Bull and a few others, we gravitated from Sherman's workshop into the Melrose Theater. And that's where, of course, Diary was created. I didn't know then that before long, Tom and I would be involved in something both of us were well trained for. Tom is a brilliant actor, one of America's finest. Did you know that the Prince of Algiers has a wart just under his nose? Truly, <laughs> he has not been recognized the way he should be recognized for his work. He's the best actor I have ever worked with. And I've had the pleasure of directing a number of very fine and accomplished actors. He's the best. Well, if I had to say, he'd get a medal. As Tom and I rehearsed diaries scene by scene for the workshop at the Melrose, it became apparent that something very special was happening. Tom made a supreme effort and reached his goal. And the rest is history. 
Well, there have been other productions of Diary following ours. Those have all been different interpretations. Hello, Falaka. You were very For example, brave tonight, my friend. None of the other productions have the hand puppet Falaka in them. If you're not careful, you'll be retired. In the your puppet Falaka became an alter ego for the clerk. The one that and is a very important part of our production. For being so unfair to his fellow workers. Such a cut from life. Reminded me of our chief clerk. Tom's asides to the audience were also unique to our production. The other productions never broke the fourth wall. Don't tell me you're going to the office, my friend. You're after that one trotting ahead over there. And it's her ample behind you're staring at. When it comes to picking up anything in a skirt, your civil servant will put a sailor to shame. Our version, I believe, was more successful than the others because of that innovation. It brought the audience in. It allowed for more humor. And it kept the piece from becoming overindulgent and self-pitying. Spain has a king. Tom's attempt to show the audience how he became the king of Spain had greater pathos because of that choice. civil service clerk. For such a thought, a man could be committed to a lunatic asylum. Dale Barnhart's original set design with the cell hidden in the wall of the clerk's room always shocked the audience when it suddenly appeared near the end of the play. Another startling aspect of the stage production were the blackouts. In the blackouts, Tom's voice could be heard in a voiceover announcing the dates. October 8th, November 8th. And as he progressed into madness, the dates became more and more uh, abstract. It, uh, the hundred February uh, and first, and I don't know. Ethereal uh, and, and very strange, which reflected his madness. Also, what worked was while that was going on, and it was not a long period of time between each scene, Tom himself in the darkness would change his set around and move around very quietly. And when the lights came up, he was either outside the door and not in the room at all or somewhere else in the room and had changed a shirt or moved a table so that it was always something a little bit different for the audience to experience every time we came out of a blackout. And it was very, very effective. And obviously a very difficult actor's responsibility. There was no stage crew. Tom was the stage crew. Tom was exhausted. Besides Paul Kent and Dale Barnhart's contributions to the success of the production, notice must be given to Elmer Blado, who brilliantly designed the lighting in what was a very small theater space. Diary of a Madman has now been performed in five different decades. And what makes this production special is that instead of trying to recreate our earlier productions, each new production has been adapted to Tom's age at the time. So the play has always stayed fresh and creatively exciting for us with each new experience. It continues to bring new emotional values to the audience as well with the progress of time. I won't need you anymore. I cannot think of another production of any play with the same actor that has taken such a journey. It's been magical. It certainly has been the most exciting and fulfilling creative theatrical experience of my life. And I also think that that's true for my best friend, my dear friend, Tom Troop. This is Don Aiton.
I'm giving you another take, Neil, just so you have. Hold on, my dogs are barking. <laughs>